Right, welcome to this product review for the new Forgebane box set that Games Workshop have released. Uh, Games Workshop very kindly sent me a copy along. Uh, so in this video, I'm uh, going to do an unboxing, show you the contents, some fantastic miniatures inside here as well, and all the other things that you can expect uh, to get inside this set. So as I said, I've got mine from Games Workshop. Usually I get my uh, figures from GamingFigures.com. Uh, so they do Games Workshop discounted rate. Uh, when this set becomes available, you'll be able to get it from them. Uh, as well, so you can check them out, that's gamingfigures.com So it's quite a, uh, a thin set here uh, usual sort of size though for these sets and there's the details there on the back so you are going to get uh, the book with the rules for the different units and also a core rules sheet inside there as well so Take command of a technological empire in a desperate clash for the most precious resource of all there can be no mercy in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. So, I think mean, this is a great idea, this set here. Fascinating they've chosen these two armies to uh, take each other on. You've got uh, sort of evil machines and then good machines, half human, half machines. That's an interesting clash between these two, but it's, it's a great matchup. It really does look very good indeed. So, that's the contents. We'll go we'll actually break the box open in just a moment. Just the background then, uh, the story behind this. Adeptus Mechanicus built their empire on the resource rich planets, worlds which the rising Necron dynasties now want back. So, there's the reasoning behind the fight here. Across the Imperium, the worlds Adeptus Mechanicus are under attack. An ancient Xenos empire is rising from beneath their feet, forced into awakening by the anarchy of a galaxy at war. The cold and metallic Necrons roused from the Aeon's long slumber, intend to restore order and obedience to their worlds through extermination. Even should it mean the slaughter of every Adeptus Mechanicus, an Imperial Knight Usurper, to have trespassed upon their sovereign domain. So, <laughs> it's going to be quite an intense fight going on, but uh, it's a fantastic idea, really, it's good. Uh, I would say at this stage, um, these sets are great if you're looking to get into the hobby. Uh, you get the, the rules that you need for the units, uh, the basic rules are in there as well, the rule sheet, uh, and then two armies, and it offers great value as well. Uh, if you buy all these units individually, uh, you can end up paying like double if you buy them individually, so it's a great value set. Also, uh, you're, getting, you're getting two armies inside, so uh, it's a great one for you and a friend to chip into so that you can uh, paint up one force each, they've balanced it out roughly equal, uh, so you can paint one army, your friend can paint the other and then you can uh, start playing games and you, you know a lot of the battle reports that we do sort of 2,000 points here on the channel but the smaller games are just as much fun so don't be put off that it's a small force, it's a, it's a great way to start and then gradually build up from there uh, but you'd have great fun playing this game here I would imagine and, and then if you could just aim to get these forces painted up and then you can expand out from there later on. So, let's set that off. I have both of these armies here. Uh, I'm a, a fan of both of these armies here, they, they really are good. Uh, but there's new units here. Uh, these uh, new walkers here. Uh, Armiger, uh, Knight Armigas just there. And then also this new. Uh, flying cryptic as well for the Necrons. Beautiful models, they do they really do look good. Let's take a look at them. So we open up the box here. So, yeah, this is interesting here. Here's the Armaga kits on there. And there's the other part to them. That's like the weaponry and shoulder pads. And then you get two of them in this box. So there's the second one. So I'm going to zoom in here uh, primarily on these uh, new models here to take a look at the kits. So this is for the, the Knight's Armiger here. Uh, that's the double melter shotgun that it has. It does look very cool. And the chainsaw there as well, the cleaver. Just there and the shoulder pads. There's the face. The front of the head, just there, and you get this larger sprue, triple sprue here, so your legs, pistons and so on, there's the feet, it's big enough, you know, it's going to be, I was going to say half the height of a knight, maybe a little bit more than that, height wise, 
problem is I've got I've just finished two thousand points of admix. Now <laughs> I want to try and squeeze these in somehow and try and re reorganise the army to have one or two of these new models. That's the top plate just there. Give you an idea. Maybe I can give you some kind of idea here. Yeah. yeah, so there's the knight. And that's him just there. Obviously you've got the shoulder pads to add on to that. So this is a miniature knight basically. Just flip that over so you can see all the details there. This is nice work here, all of this detail that they've put in. They're all very cool. Yeah, really look forward to putting these together. And uh, great to use as allies. I mean, you can do a detachment of you know, these and the knight, three of them working together, and it's a detachment you can add into any Imperial force, you know, which is the great thing about it. The great in Apocalypse games as well. Cool, so that's that sprue. And the, the other one I'm going to show you, the other kits are, uh, have already been released and been around for a while, uh, but the other one's this Necron Cryptek here. So this is part of the sprue. That's the base. Detail just there. It's quite a big model. This is, uh, I love this part here on this, ba this uh, backpack here. Very, very cool. And it is a big model. No. It does look very nice. So it's the details there of the body. And then flip them over. Yeah, it's really good. I really don't like the, the regular Cryptek, I don't like it. It comes in fine cast as well. It's broken a number of times, it's sort of hunched over, and, and the, the fine cast never really looks that great. So they've done one in plastic here, and uh, it looks absolutely brilliant. So great job uh, getting that done for the Necrons. So that's, that's the new stuff. Then inside, you've obviously got bits for the Tech Priest Dominus. I have one of them painted up. Then uh, Necron Wraiths. One, two, three of them. Just there. This is Necron Immortals here, inside the kit as well. And it's Katari uh, Rangers, uh, or Vanguard is your choice, how you put those together. And there's more from that set as well. That set. There's loads of models in this box set. And then they've given you a Lich Guard set here. I have a unit of Lich Guard, but uh, there's different configurations you can go for. You can go for the ones with the War Scythes, and also these Triarch Praetorians as well, which I'm interested in maybe doing one of those, so this has worked out very well indeed, because I may well end up painting a new unit for my Necron Army. I'm not sure on the list yet. I've got the Codex here already from Games Workshop. I'm trying to put a theoretical list together but not sh not totally sure yet but that's handy to have that I may well construct these or I could go for a massive unit of Lich Guard well in this video um, what's your favourite unit of the Lich yeah, leave that as a bit of a uh, not competition but leave your feedback here what do you like the most if you're a Necron player Lich Guard uh, with the Hyperface Swords and Dispersion Shields or do you like the ones with the War Scythes or the Triarch Praetorians, leave that uh, in the comments section and maybe you'll influence which I <laughs> decide to go for. I have Lich Guard already with the Hyperface Swords and Dispersion Shields, always like them. Uh, but do I try something different or do I expand that unit to a large unit of 10, for example? Um, leave your comments below. It'd be interesting to read what you have to say there. You get one of these inside as well. You could easily frame that beautiful piece of artwork. That's a great touch to the Games Workshop added that in or you can add it onto your wall at your local war gaming, war gaming club but the artwork from the box they've given you on a piece of card here very cool don't have to do that but they've added that in so then there is the base of Scabby now looking for the larger bases they are mounted on big bases here these uh, Armagus so one and two and all of the other relevant bases here. I think that's for the Tech Priest Dominus or the Crypto. Just there. Set of bases there as well. Another base. And then transfers. Right, so they've given you regular ones to the Necrons. 
And then they've also given you the Imperial Knights Armiga transfer sheet here. It's sort of a, uh, the different households there, uh, and then some sort of Admech uh, transfers as well. I'll zoom in here so you can see what you get. So yeah, House Terran, Hawk Shroud, Cadmus, Tyrannus, Raven, uh, different markings there. I love transfer, especially for knights that look so, so good. So it's great they've given you a nice uh, selection here. Uh, Skitari Admech sort of markings here as well, all the way around. Little symbols and glyphs and so on. That's the shoulder pads just there and here I'd imagine as well. So yeah, giving you a load of stuff. So very cool set just there I'll be making use of those we're going for a more of an admin theme with mine imagine if I paint them up paint them up the same as the current Imperial Knight that I have so it's that red yellow black uh, color scheme of uh, House Raven yeah which is here and I have that marking already on the night uh, just yes yeah, so they'll match up quite nicely that's nice that the large knight and then uh, guarded and sort of scouting head with these two uh, armigas. That's a nice theme. And oh yeah, regular Skitari uh, transfer sheet as well for the infantry and so on. And then they give you this publication, and then there's the uh, core rules sheet in there as well, which is handy to have in a game to have that uh, just nearby. So inside they give you the full details of how to construct all of these models. So very helpful. And then uh, the core rules summary sheet, just the same as you get for regular games 40k. So it just means that you can have no other Games Workshop products, only this set, and you can uh, construct and paint these armies, and you have the rules that you need for the units without having to get codexes. And then uh, the core rules for basis, the basics of playing the game as well. So you're ready to go as soon as you buy the set, and that's why it's highly recommend this for people uh, starting Warhammer 40,000 or trying to get back into 40k and you, you don't know 8th edition, then this is a great way to start. And it's great value as well. So if you, re if you really like one of these armies, I uh, heavily advise you go for it. And then maybe that one of these armies you don't want to collect, you can always sell them on to a friend, put them on eBay and so on uh, to. Uh, Save that way. So here is the publication. It's exceptionally well produced. It's very, very cool. So great piece of artwork here. It gives you an idea of the scale of this model. So he's regular infantry up to like his knees and then the rest of the height just up there. Intense fight between these two forces, the new the new awakening. Machine Colt, that's the Admech, and then the Ancient Evil, the Necron's just there. Don't think we've played that combination in the Battle Report yet. So I look forward to doing that. The Empire Beneath. It's got Night Worlds, Quarry Worlds, Faithful of the Omnisire, the Death of Worlds Arising. Here's your showcase here of the different models. That truly is beautiful model. That Cryptek is fantastic. He really, really is good. Very, very nice. And then the, uh, the uh, Warglaive here as well. So new models and they fit in just nicely and they're fantastic as well. So it's great to see that. So game rules and missions. So yeah, the whole theme of the, the story that's going on here, they then give you some missions to reflect what's going on in this specific battle. So they're giving you some unique missions as well. So ambush in the dunes, very cool, add mech in the middle, and deployment for the others, that's good. Yeah, these are, I'm just wondering if these are 6x4, I think they are, so yeah, you can play these on regular 6x4 uh, tables as well, so you could try out some of these games. The threat revealed, objective mark in the middle, add mech on one side, there's a bit of a campaign potential here. The rising necropolis. Evacuation coordinates here. These look some good missions. Have done it to Games Workshop. 8th edition. Uh, and then chapter approved. 
and no doubt these missions here as well are great fun to play the new missions uh, to add variety it's very skeptical I always, always like playing just the standard missions uh, but then we've been trying out if you notice in different battle reports on both of the channels we've been trying out different missions and it's been very very enjoyable indeed so I imagine these are going to be really good missions there's three of them there again another showcase they do clash very nicely here uh, the red here and the, the silver of the Necron, so it does look very nice indeed. Um, I've painted up my Necron similar to this style, and the Admech I've painted up here as well, in the, in the same way, Mars uh, colour schemes. These There are tutorials for both of these on the channel here, so if you like the way, uh, if you see my back on, if you like the way it's painted up, check out that tutorial. And then for the Necrons as well, if you like the way I've painted those up, there is the regular painting tutorial for them on the channel as well. And then for the Admech, there's a knight here in the background. There's a full painting tutorial for that. Belisarius Call as well, and one of the June Crawlers uh, just seen here. Those are in-depth painting tutorials, and they are on the Plus channel if you uh, want to see some uh, more painting tutorials for them. Defenders of the Forge World, so this is, yeah, it's got all of your Canticles rules here for your Admech, so the full rules for them. And then your unit entries, Tech Brace Dominus, Guitar Rangers. Just in there, Amagal Warglaves. And uh, they just give you rules for. Interesting. I haven't given you the rules for the Vanguard, so you have to go for Rangers in this particular one. Uh, and the Amagal Warglaves just here. Hmm. I imagine it was worth going through the rules here. Yeah, so I'll go through these points. I'm sure you're interested to hear the full stats for these here. So Amagal Warglaves, I'm interested to see this. So this uh, it's one to three models per unit, and so you can just you can get two of them and it will use up one slot there, which is helpful enough. Two hundred twenty-three points. That's your starting cost. Ouch! <laughs> so it's just, it's expensive enough. Um, so uh, power level twelve. So obviously you've got your damage bracket here. Movement fourteen. Nice and quick. Weapon skill plus skill three plus. Then you, and your damage comes. Uh, when you reach six wounds, then down to three wounds, the movement drops from ten down, uh, down fourteen, down to ten, then down to seven. Weapon skill goes from three plus, four plus, five plus, and it's the same for ballistic skill as well. Um, yeah, I'll get shot up pretty bad, potentially. So, uh, yeah, you can take one of them, an additional one, or two additional. Each armor wall globe is equipped with a Reaper chain cleaver a thermal spear and a heavy stubber. So heavy stubber you've got to pay four points for that. So that's 227 points. Then uh, you're looking at the Reaper Chain Cleaver. Zero points, that's good. That's a bit of a relief. And then the thermal spear, which is your shooting weapon. Uh, is zero as well. All right, so 227 points all in. That's, that's why you're going to have to end up paying an extra 40, extra 30 for your weapons, but it's not. So 227 points is your total amount. So, yeah, expensive enough. Now, a lot of tanks now for different factions you can get from between 150 to 200, well equipped. This guy's not well over 200, 227, so it's expensive enough. Um, Strength 6, Toughness 7, 12 wounds, 4 attacks, Lish 8 and a 3 up save for him. So then, ah oh look that's cool. So you can swap the Heavy Stubber for a Melter Gun, I reckon I would do that for sure, just to add a bit more firepower to him, definitely worth doing that. Uh, and it matches nicely with the Thermal Spear that he has. Now, so this is matching up really nice because I've gone for the Thermal Cannon uh, with my knight now, so now we've got thermal spears on these uh, Armager war globes. Cool. So, thermal spear then, range 30, it's decent range, and he moves very fast, so you can get him in range nice and quickly. Assault D3, so potential of three shots there. Uh, strength 8, minus 4 on D6. Damage, and if you're in half the range, you roll two dice, uh, you know, which is going to be 15 inches. If you're in half the range, you roll two dice, discard in the lowest results, and nastier damage up close. They're vehicle busters and monster killers with their firepower. Decent enough, for sure. Uh, it does have the Iron Shield, the same as the Knights, the 5 plus Invon save there. This is... 
request uh, allegiance. Okay, so I think he can gain from some of the specialised uh, stratagems that the Admech can have, like um, uh, rotate iron shields, for example, to improve that invulnerability. I think they get that. Uh, user rules for explodes just there. Uh, units within six inches, D3 mortal wounds. If you blow up on six, and a vehicle squadron, the first time this unit is set up, all its models must be placed within six of each other. From that point onwards, they are independent units. Right, so that's fine. Oh, look, it's Lord of War here. Yeah. So that means you can go for that triple Lord of War and you can gain three command points from the book as well. So it's quite a, a decent allied detachment to add to your army to actually improve your uh, command points as well. So very good. Uh, the Reaper Chain Cleaver then is melee weapon. It's times two strength. So if you're fighting at strength 12, it's going to freeze to wound uh, most vehicles. Virtually all the vehicles. And then it's AP minus three and flat three damage. So you'd struggle to... Uh, you'd struggle to kill a vehicle in one round of combat and then sure exceptionally well, all hit, all wounded uh, and no saves then you could do it but, but you can expect to put on some damage there uh, with your four attacks so yeah beautiful model, rules are pretty good for him and uh, if you've got an Imperial Knight, I know a lot of people are looking forward to doing that, you've got an Imperial Knight and they've got a couple of sort of scout uh, units to partner up with them and work together but uh, and a decent fire support here a lot of people have been saying oh your dune crawlers the firepower is not strong enough well maybe we've found <laughs> possible replacements here with these so it would match my back army nicely to have a couple of these uh, joining force so we'll keep going here because we've also got the new uh, necron cryptech to cover as well they're giving you uh, your painting scheme here, how to paint these up. I'm probably going to paint mine exactly how you see it just here. Yep. He's, they've, yeah, they've painted it up here. This is House Raven. Yeah, it's, that's the exact scheme just there. Great. So this is all very helpful. Uh, and then uh, there's different options there as well. If you're looking for more diff uh, more uh, painting options, and get the full codex for Admech, and that gives you all the different colour schemes uh, that you can use. So moving on, very excited about that. Love the yellow chevrons on these as well. They're matching nicely with the one that I have. There's the artwork there, which you've you've got it in the book, and also on that printed out card. So Necrons. So this is all updated. This is the new rules for them uh, that you'll see in the codex when it comes along. I do plan to do a review of that when it goes on pre-order. So Cryptech then. So this is regular rules for Cryptek uh, here. So uh, as a single model armed with a staff of light, his power level six, and he's seventy points. It's pretty good stat line. Movement five, weapon skill, and ballistic skill three plus, strength four, toughness four, four wounds. Only one attack though. So don't expect much from in combat. Leadership ten and four up save. Leadership ten is very good. Uh, Staff of Light then, if you give him a Staff of Light, this is sort of a regular Cryptek. Range 12, Assault 3, Strength 5, minus 2 and 1 damage. And in melee, Strength for the user, minus 2 and 1 damage. It's going to do nothing in combat, he's just got one attack. So you're really taking him for his, bon his, his uh, bonuses or his benefits that he grants to other units. So he has Living Metal actually. So the new rules for that is probably the same. Yeah, recovers one wound lost earlier in the battle. Remember to do that. There's a number of units and vehicles for Necrons that have that ability, like monoliths, for example. Uh, Technomancer, add one to all reanimation protocol rolls for models uh, from units within three inches of any friendly cryptex. So, reanimation, you've got models that are. So, the rules have slightly changed, I think, here. Unless they're the, they might be the same. Read, read the new rules here. Roll a d6 for each slain model from this unit unless the whole unit has been completely destroyed at the beginning of your turn. Uh, so it has to be slain models. So models that flee for morale, uh, you can't resurrect them. I mean, that's the way it works now. I, I'm not sure if that's the same as it used to be, but that's the rules as it is at the moment. Uh, on a 5+, plus, the model's reanimation protocol is activated and it's returned to this unit. Otherwise, it remains inactive, or you can roll again at the start of each of your subsequent turns. 
So, got a unit of immortals, for example, this, this script text nearby. Uh, there's one of them left, four of them have been slain. Um, you roll four dice, five pluses, they return uh, back to the unit, and then any others, uh, just you have to roll up for them on another turn. Usually five plus, with his rule, the crypt tech, and so I'm a big fan of these, you get plus one to the rolls, you're like four plus. Half a chance of getting those models back in the fight, which is very, very powerful. And so when a model's generation protocol is activated, set it up with a unit coherency. If any model from this unit that was already on the battlefield at the start of the turn, more than one inch from any models. If you cannot do this, this because there's no room, do not set it up. But that's a great rule. So they're very helpful. Very, very helpful to have. I think, without getting too much into it, the, the theme that I'm liking for Necrons is uh, the, the reanimation units. Units that reanimate and come back. So uh, that's the kind of route I'm going to go for. So you may well see units uh, feature, featuring quite heavily units that reanimate. I love the idea of you know you kill them and they just keep coming back. Kill them and just keep coming back. And that's so. You know, make them very solid and hard to get rid of. It's been a while, it's been a long time since I've used Necrons. So, uh, it'd be fascinating to get them back in the, back on the channel again. So, uh, a Chronometron, which you have to pay for, 15 points, it makes him 85 points. If you take that, uh, infantry units within 3 inches of a friendly cryptic with a chronometron have a 5 plus invon save against shooting attacks. That's helpful, for sure, to grant an invon save for those units. Stick them in the heart of your gun line, march the other units around, and they will gain a 5 plus invon. That's how I was playing the cryptic in the previous uh, index, and it was, very, it was very, very helpful. Or you can go for a canoptic cloak. See, it's one or the other. Interesting. So the canoptic cloak is 10 points, it's a bit cheaper. A model equipped with a canoptic cloak has a move characteristic of 10 and gains the fly keyword. You double your move and you can fly. In addition, at the start of your turn, you can select one friendly model that has the living metal ability within three inches of this model. That model regains D3 lost wounds rather than one from the living metal ability. So it's great for repairing stuff. So a bit of speed to keep up with whatever units it needs to, vehicles especially. Um, or, or anyone, or a, or a character. It's anyone with the living metal. And as we've seen, he has living metals. It's not just vehicles, it's going to be other units. Uh, he has Steve Free Lost Wounds. Don't, don't expect much from them in combat or for, sh or for shooting, really. Not really, but it's more the benefits that they grant to other units. A very helpful unit to have uh, buried in amongst your legions of Necrons. So. Cool, I look forward, and the, the model's fantastic. I have to have that model in the army, it's, it's a beautiful model. So, uh, Immortals, uh, rules for them. Lich Guard, just here. And then, uh, Canoptic Wraiths, as well. Some of my favorite units here. They're giving you some nice color schemes to choose from, so all very, very helpful, and for sure. I've always been a big fan of that color scheme. It does look very cool with the bronzy gold on top and then the blue markings, very sort of Egyptian style. And they look great when the whole army's painted up. Uh, just there. What I've seen, another tip as well for Necrons is the kits come with the uh, the green inserts here. Uh, but what I've seen people do is you can you can buy, probably in places like eBay, you can buy that rod, uh, the correct size, uh, but in different colours. So you can buy like orange for example or blue and cut it up and then stick those on and change the colour of that chamber just there. I've seen it done. It does it does look really really good. So that's just an option. Now you know that option's out there. And then there's your points values there at the back. So that's the publication you get with it and the, and the rules inside for the new units. Uh, and then that is the unboxing and review uh, of this Forge Bane set. So uh, that's the review then uh, of the new Forge Bane set. Didn't see this one coming, uh, but Games Workshop have released this, uh, and it, it looks great. It really is going to be another successful, and I think very, very good idea indeed. Uh, fascinating combination of these two fighting each other, but definitely makes sense uh, with all of the developments in the 40k universe uh, at the moment. So I encourage if you're getting into 40k, thinking about it, you think, oh, 
you know, what point should I start getting into 40k? This is a good excuse to do it. Uh, it's great value, you're getting loads and loads of kits in here, some great new models as well. Uh, you're getting all the rules that you need. Uh, the core rules are in there as well. And so, yeah, you and a, you and a friend, or you can paint up both armies if you want to, but you and a friend could chip in, uh, paint an army each, and then enjoy some great battles, and then some really good themed uh, missions for you to use as well. But that's the review for this. Uh, it's been sent to me by Games Workshop ahead of time, so thanks to them for sending it out. As I mentioned earlier, I usually get my stuff from gamingfigures.com. They do Games Workshop and a whole lot of the gaming systems at a discounted rate as well. But there it is, that's the review uh, for Forgebane. Keep a lookout for it, it's going on pre-order. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.